Good afternoon. Um, do you know how to fix a Windows computer? Reboot it? <laughs> and do you know how to hack a Microsoft computer? Use Microsoft tools to do that. So my talk is hack Microsoft using Microsoft sign binaries. Uh, I'm Pierre Alexandre. Uh, I'm Belgian and I work in Canada for, for Deloitte uh, as a senior consultant. Um, doing incident response and red teaming. Uh, I have 14 years experience and I, I, uh, ha I talk at uh, several conferences internationally. And I'm a StarCraft 2 player and I was very happy to see Blizzard here. <laughs> so I asked to the guy when will they uh, when will they do StarCraft 3? <laughs> I, did, I did not have any response. <laughs> so, why did I make power memory? Uh, my first goal was to understand uh, uh, the Windows authentication system uh, into the memory, uh, really in inside the memory in the kernel. Uh, I wanted to learn PowerShell and learn memory concepts. Um, what is power memory? Power memory is a Minesweeper solver. That's all. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> so, um, currently, all eyes of security guys are on PowerShell. You have a lot of tools that can detect PowerShell activities now, like Carbon Black, Tanium, but also some uh, endpoint antivirus like Simon Tech as they did a very good pa white paper about um, the increased use of PowerShell in attacks and some patterns they can detect. Um, we get some power, the, the power away, which was last year the, the first one somewhere uh, into the memory. I did a, a little script that you can find on my GitHub called Invoke Tartarus uh, that does the same thing, so uh, running into the memory and encrypted files. But I think there are more possibilities than just PowerShell with PowerShell.exe, etc. Um, a lot of guys are working on that, like Casey Smith, which is an awesome guy, about whitelisting a lot of things. Uh, you have Armjoy from Empire Project, uh, Ben 10, which launched NPS, uh, which is no PowerShell, and I did some interesting thing uh, too with msbuild.exe, you can find it on my uh, GitHub too. So basically you, you execute a reverse shell with an XML file that you, had, uh, that you host on a, on a web dev server. And through msbuild.exe, you will launch a PowerShell uh, into the memory, into the, the msbuild uh, memory process, sorry. So, with PowerShell, that is a Microsoft tool, you, you don't have to use PowerShell.exe, but uh, the DLLs, if you want, and a Microsoft sign debugger, uh, power memory can achieve whatever you want. In the user land, in the kernel land, and also in Wonderland. <laughs> um, so the basic concept of power memory is just to send and receive text. Uh, so power memory sends text to debugger and it receives text from the debugger, that's it. With this concept you can do everything you want into the, the, the Windows kernel and the user land. Uh, when I say text, it's bytes. So how does it work? You have power memory from one side and WinDBG or CDB which is a common line uh, version of uh, WinDBG. WinDBG is a Windows debugger uh, from Microsoft, which is sign. Permary will call the debugger and send a command to execute. Then it will retrieve the bytes, parses them, and send a new command with byte write or read to execute. So you have a server somewhere and per memory and you, the pair memory will save for, basically for retrieve some uh, memory information. It will say, okay, by a WMI call, dump the memory at this, for this process, by example. 
the server will answer, okay, here's your, uh, by example, lsas.xz dump, which contains some interesting information like passwords. And you can do uh, for a lot of servers if you want. But yes, I said that I dropped a binary file on the file system. And you will say, okay, you touch your disk, it's, it's, maybe it's not very good. That's true, but I do it, I can do it also like that. So you have the server, you have memory, you say dump it, it will dump it. And to do that, I will use userdump.exe, which is uh, Microsoft Tools 2, and which is signed by Microsoft. And if you are interested with this kind of tools, uh, Microsoft wrote in 2008 a very good article with a lot of tools they create, signed to, that can lead to dump process memory. So I don't dump, I don't dump every day, but when I dump, I did it with Microsoft tools. So me per memory is also a userland attacker. You can, you can get Windows password from memory, but you can also inject and execute a shellcode in a remote process. You can modify the memory of a process. I will show you with a, uh, with a little demo this thing will by, with Minesweeper, by example. Um, per memory is also a kernel LAN attacker. So with DCOM, uh, direct kernel object manipulation uh, stuff. You can do pretty much everything that uh, you can imagine, uh, like hide and hide a process. I, I made some POC. Uh, inject all privilege in a process with system in identity because I found uh, with a lot of uh, um, empirical approach on a lot of different uh, operating system or version of Windows that the system hash is always the same, whatever the system you are. Um, so you can inject this identity pretty easily. You can pass the token attack, protect a process with this concept. So also because I like a lot uh, Active Directory, uh, it can do a lot of things about that to recon it. So it can SPN scan, which is pretty useful when you want to find, by example, all the SQL server in a domain, all the file server in the domain. I don't know which wall you, you want to find, but it's uh, very useful because you have just to um, ask the domain controller one time, okay, show me all your uh, SQL server. You don't have to make a N map very noisy thing, or thing uh, but just asking to the domain controller. You get GPP password of all connected forest, not just the forest when you land it, but all connected forest. You can ac access also server shares of all connected forest which is very interesting because in a lot of huge company, you have some misconfiguration of your uh, uh, server share and uh, which are uh, often uh, configured with authenticated user write. That can, and, and they can write on this share. So you, you will see that and you can draw the EAD tip topology. You have also some elevation of rights inside the framework. You can retrieve uh, site.xml file password from McAfee. I did the same, the same day I did that, I think it was Armjoy, I don't, I don't remember, but we were two to, to do that the same day. Uh, you can crash operating system vulnerable to some uh, vulnerability. You can bypass USC, etc. And yes, there is a lull thing, because on several companies in Quebec City, uh, you have some very old software firewall which are uh, installed on, the, on all computers and which can lead to ask the user, okay, give me your password, I'm, I'm, I'm your firewall, you can trust me, <laughs> and you will receive uh, this information. So that's the main men menu. Uh, it's uh, the interactive menu of per memory, but I also did uh, 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 some things that which I that's bind to Empire, and uh, you can use it non-interactively. So the thing is with per memory is to debug, but not really debug, but use the debugger to read and write the memory. And I don't know if you know Jeffress Nover. Jeffress Nover is the, is the creator of PowerShell. 
uh, and he said to us, okay, automate everything. So I decided to automate the debugger to, to hack Microsoft. And why using the Microsoft debugger? Because it's a Microsoft signed application. So to me, it's very interesting because in a company where there are a lot of def defensive mechanism, uh, uh, often a signed application won't be, will be trusted by a, a security analyst and every people inside the company. So first step, when you use WinDBG, uh, you can do some DB, which is display bytes uh, with uh, little Indian uh, transformation, and you will have some very interesting information like that. <laughs> You can also do display words to have uh, two bytes, display double words, you, you understand the concept. And if you do something like DU, you will display Unicode. So on, in a place into the memory where you have clear text, you will have like something like my email address directly in the memory. If you do that on a, uh, something encrypted, you will, you will get encrypted bytes. So it's not getting the password inside the memory. It's not just uh, doing du and and expecting to have the, to get the password. It was true before, but not now. Uh, the first thing you have to do is to load the symbols. What is the symbols? The symbols are PDB files, which are uh, which which is um, com when when you compile something into the Microsoft world, you will generate some PDB files, and into this DB. PDB files, you have a lot of very interesting information, and CDB or WinDBG, which are, is the Microsoft debugger tool, you have um, the, the, the way of uh, uh, managing these symbols uh, automatically. So if you say, okay, show me these symbols, uh, the, the, and you have the PDB files, you will get automatically the, the, the right address into the memory, even if it's dynamic. So if you do if you ask the debugger to display uh, symbols without having loading the, the PDB, you will have some qu quotation mark like that. So you load the symbols, and bam, you have the correct bytes. So symbols are free. It's Microsoft uh, publishes them. So for all version of uh, its Microsoft uh, tools, but also for its uh, operating system from uh, very old operating system to the newest. Um, and the symbols we will look, look for for getting the password will be list, uh, a list entry thing. Uh, the list entry is a double, uh, double linked uh, list entry, so each element are linked together in a circular way. And it will contain all the domain, user, and password of people which is logged on the computer you will uh, Access. So the symbol for this double uh, list and double link list entry is L access list. As a key for NT5 operating system, so like 2003 by example, or XP is this this GP this the DSXK key and fit the feedback you 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 will need. For NT6 and T10, it's the same thing. It's H3 DS key and AES key. And you need the initialization vector. For, for NT6 and NT10, it was very easy because as soon as you get this key and initialization vector, it's very simple to implement an algorithm and get the password. For NT5, it was harder because uh, DSX is a DS implementation of Microsoft, which is not documented. So it was harder to decrypt the password of, for NT5 than for NT6 and NT10. <laughs> but we need to go deeper. Let's get technical. So you want password in user land memory. Uh, Microsoft documented the Digest Security Support Provider, which is one of the authentication provider uh, of Microsoft. You have different provider, but this one is very interesting because it manages uh, two things, LDAP queries and uh, web authentication. And in the company network, web authentication is not easy to remove because it will manage SSO authentication to SharePoint, by example. You, you, you cannot remove, just remove that. Um, so it's used everywhere and you will, 
you will always get this password. Uh, yes, there is no reason to store the password into the memory after the utilization because the concept is to just use the hash of the password on the network. So normally, you, Microsoft could just remove it from memory, but it didn't. I don't know why. So the concept to st is to, to steal the bytes. You want to dump LSAS process. You, you can do it by uh, different mechanisms. One, dumping LSAS process, LSAS.exe. Locally or remotely, because you can do it remotely too by uh, calling WMI uh, and asking, uh, asking the system to dump this process. You can convert iBurst file.sys to dump file. You can make the computer crashed and get the dump file and then give it to per memory and it will get, give you the, the password. You can leverage hypervisor. This, uh, this point is pretty much um, the most interesting uh, because I, I will, I will uh, show you after, but basically if you are just an operator on Hyper-V on VMware, you are like, uh, you have more rights than a domain administrator in, the, in, in this, this network. Um, and also, you can, if you have kernel mode access, you can directly access LSAS process and you have no need to dump the memory, but just access to the information you need. So I say for the hypervisor, you say you are an, uh, an operator uh, in an, an hypervisor environment and you have uh, less rights than the domain admin. Seriously? <laughs> so this thing is on Hyper-V, but it works also on VMware. You will just use an Hyper-V tool from Microsoft, uh, which is a tool write, wrote by uh, Mark Rusinovich, which is Live KD, and which will allow you to dump the memory of a, a virtual machine running into the, the Hyper-V system. So once you have this dump, you give it to per memory, and it will give you the password. And even if you have absolutely no right inside the domain or inside the virtual machine. And it works for containers too. The containers of Microsoft, when you launch a, a container in Microsoft World, it will launch a new LSAS process. So you have, basically you have access to all the password of the containers once you have access to the host. Can you see the password? It is over there. No? It's like uh, f trying to find well do. <laughs> but um, if I show you uh, the, the information like that. So you have, it's, it's a f famous double link list entry. So it's just one element of the list. Uh, this uh, green information is the next item in the list. So the address of the next item in the list. This information is a previous entry. Then you have the address, this address, the current address. Um, LUID address is a, LUID in Windows is a unique identifier um, that is 64 bit, 8 bytes, and which is guaranteed to be unique until the next reboot. It's a totally not non-interesting for getting the password. <laughs> then the username address. If you, if you type du on this address, you will have the username in clear text. The NetBIOS domain name address. The encrypted password, so if you do du on that, you will have nothing, just encrypted bytes. The domain name address and the username at domain address. It's a 2008 R2 uh, dump, so it's not the same thing exactly, uh, and it's 64 bits. It's not the same thing on a 2003, it's 32 bits, 64 bits. It's not the same thing uh, than on a Windows 10, etc. So with this approach, you have a lot of things to implement because it's not uh, always the same information at the same places. Yes, so max length, min length. That help to automate the process. So now you, ha you have the password encrypted and you need the key and then the initialization vector. So to get the key, you just type the, the symbols that I give you, gave you, uh, give you uh, just uh, before that. It will give you something like that. So you type the next entry and you will get some interesting information. So in red, it says size. 
it's uh, an empirical approach, so I estimate it, it that is always the, it, it seems to be the size. Uh, the, the yellow information is a tag, which is always the same, KSSM. So next entry, you will find uh, an, another tag, which is MSSK, and in, in pink, it's the key you, f you, you look for. Uh, so if you just type DB, it will make the little Indian transformation, and the, you will, you will uh, be able to inject that in your uh, decryption algorithm. algorithm. And finally, uh, it's really the hard, harder part, you will see. So you have to type the, the, the symbols, db, and then you get the initialization vector. <laughs> so it was really the most hardest part in all the process. So I have some demo, demo, sorry. So it's per memory, you have the menu. You want to reveal password? Yes. You can ask per memory, okay, you will find password eventually. Maybe you will find password. Uh, do you want that I try to tell you what kind of account it is? It is a backup operator, it is an administrator, it is a domain administrator, it is an um, enterprise administrator, something. If you say yes, it will ask to the domain controller. So if you want to just stay in this system and don't do any request uh, outside, you, you will just say no. So locally, in this case, I, do you want to exfiltrate the information on paste bin? No. Uh, do you want to clear the event log on this local computer? So it's not just a uh, right click and a clear event log. It's really take the event log in place, take my special specific uh, event log that I crafted, and replace my event log with uh, your, your event log with a lot of crappy event log. <laughs> so you say, OK. It will, so here, it will get the LSAS dump then passes all the bytes, get, uh, get the password information into the memory, and you will have administrator winning with spring 2017, and user one with password three bank, which is very good password because it's not one, password one. <laughs> so you can do the same thing uh, remotely. So yes, if I ping DC1, okay, PC1, DC1, sorry, is another computer. Okay, it's DC1. So no, I want that remote, DC1, no, no. So it will, uh, through SMB, it will uh, um, drop the binary that will dump the LSAS process, retrieve it, then uh, I will pass uh, the same way that in locally. And normally, yes, MS, MSDSC is, uh, is just uh, something I crafted. It's not at all a true process. <laughs> it's just because it's, it's, it's very uh, close to a real process in Microsoft. So you get the password spring 2017. So that was for name of that. Okay. So in user learn, you can also with this technique inject a, sh inject a shell code in a remote process and execute it without calling API. So normally when you do that, you will say, okay, I will, I will virtual alloc something and then I will call an API in Windows to execute the process. But my goal was to just do all the thing by just sending byte and writing byte and reading bytes through a debugger. So you have to find a memory executable zone, a null padding zone in the memory uh, of the remote process to inject your shell code in, in this uh, memory. You need the address of the null padding zone uh, to, in to inject your, your shell code. 
then you will need to pass the PE executable dynamically. So the PE is running into the memory, so you need to dynamic, dynamically uh, pass it, it. You will find the address of the module loaded to inject. And a lot, basically, and sequentially, you will find all the information that you need until the padding zone. Um, and uh, after that, you will be able to, uh, so you write your bytes at the, 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 the good places, and then you just change your RIP, which is the uh, register instruction pointer, and by doing that, you will take to the operating system to execute your uh, address zone, and you will get a nice calculator. <laughs> so I have a demo, demo for that. So in Polymer, you have poor process with different things. Uh, I will create a new notepad, by example. And, okay, process name, shit. Okay, process name notepad.exe. So, up, and you have it. If I look in per, 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 uh, process explorer, sorry, you will find notepad is injected with a calculator. And I have some interesting other findings. If you want now to, okay, I, I will just go back to that because we have kernel stuff too. And yes, I need to present of you. And with the same technique, if you are able to get in kernel uh, by reusing a, a known technique to hide process, I will do the same thing, but just by reading and writing the bytes. So the goal is to hide a process in, in, a, in, a, in, the, in the correct list into the kernel. So you want to do that. If you want to do that, you have to break this link, and then, so you, it's the bytes that you will uh, write to do that, and you, you need to just <laughs> uh, create new links from previous and next process. And then if you just do that, you will have a, a nice BSOD, because uh, the operating system now uh, will figure it out. It will say, oh, uh, it's not normal, I have a, 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 a process structure, e process structure, but that is not linked to anything. It's not normal. I, I have to crash because it's, I, I'm corrupted. So you have to redo just the link of the process you uh, you you hide. And remember, I just injected a calculator in in Notepad. So I want to hide this process. So I will say hide notepad.exe. So notepad is over there. Ah, it does not work. Ah, uh, notepad. I, I, yes, it's. I, I hide not. I just hide notepad, not calc. Sorry. So I will hide calc also. Okay. So it's not no any calc, but if you look, calc is over there. Notepad is over there. So I want to unhide. So I need the process address that I know. And calc is there. And if I uh, okay. 
Okay, not bad is that too. Cool. Okay. So so you you did some user land uh, things and kernel land things too. Um, I made some weaponization to be able to do that in real world, and I did a pull request into Empire, but since a lot of things happened to the project Empire, with people leaving as a, a company, uh, it, it, was not, uh, it was not integrated uh, currently yet, but it will be normally in uh, uh, 2.0 version. Um, yes, I will pass that. It's it's the I didn't correct it, but the the new pull request is five zero three, not two nine eight. So if you want to do the thing, same things with an agent that you have in in into the memory, you have to be fishy first or find another technique. For the target to load your the Empire agent or another agent if you have another one, through your agent, you will load per memory in the target machine memory. Drop the signed debugger, and you never you want you will uh, make calls to the Windows API. So if some advanced endpoint detection and response tools try to find you because you call some API uh, Windows. Uh, it 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 will be it won't be able able to find your uh, your stuff, and then you make fun and profits, and then you go to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Normally, <laughs> so the demo. Yeah, I I don't have the, this demo. I I just have. Uh, I can show you. But if you know uh, Empire, you will recognize Sing. Th I think I have s this. So yes, you use credential R W M C R S, and just saying run here. You will have something like that. So the same thing that in interactively mode, but in a non-interactive process. Okay, mitigation. So the first thing is you cannot trust trusted tools. Uh, you have to look uh, really at the behavior of tools. Why these tools are sending some bytes to another tools? Uh, so you have to understand what they do. You have to look for dumping activities. And a very good way to do that is to look for a uh, suspended process. So if a process is very fastly uh, uh, put in suspended mode, it's weird. And if it's Elsass, it's absolutely abnormal, because normally it, it will never uh, be, be put in um, suspended mode. Uh, look also for suspicious bcdedit.exe, which is another Microsoft tools allowing you to make some very interesting thing to your kernel. So asking, by example, to uh, Windows to uh, to run in kernel debugging. Don't trust the endpoint defense mechanism implicitly, and look for suspicious user tools behavior. So you have no very simple way to mitigate this kind of attacks. And because I'm work from Deloitte, uh, we have some framework to, do to, to be able to mitigate this, this kind of thing when we, we do compromise assessment or our incident response. So basically, what we will say to our clients is look uh, first to your crown jewels and be able to detect quickly uh, to not to, to avoid every attack, but to uh, contain uh, the, the damage that the, the attacker will be able to do to your company. Um, because it's not something that you will avoid. You, you, you will be attacked, and it will be successful, but the, the thing is not 
uh, to say it won't be successful at all, but okay, it will be successful, but I will be able to detect it fastly and to uh, maintain, uh, contain the damage, damages. So uh, the main takeaways is um, the, the basic SIM uh, use cases can detect already API calls. It's, it's easy. You, you have just to say, okay, I saw that this process make virtual alloc uh, calls to uh, this process, so it's not normal, and a security analyst will be able to view that. Um, sorry. Um, using a signed debugger, okay, you drop something on the disk, um, but it will uh, force it, it will force the, the blue team to look for the behavior of, the, of your attacks. Not just because this tool was a sign; it's okay. I can just avoid to look for that. Um, you can use public symbols to get memory addresses of every Microsoft uh, tools, but also of every tools which were compiled in Microsoft World. With this technique, you can play New Zealand kernel land and look at Empire 503 pull request because uh, there is also a, a certificate bug which I corrected. I want to see you something before the end. So I said you can manipulate memory and if you want to play. You can do some interesting <coughs> stuff with PowerShell and the debugger. So we have the Minesweeper. I never played at this game before trying to manipulate the memory, but it's pretty cool. So you can say, okay, um, yes, when lo you look into the memory, you will figure out that 24 and, sorry, 24, 8 and 30 widths, it's a maximum allowed by the computer because it's a maximum allow into the memory just for that. So if I try to make some different thing here, it, w it won't work. So by example, I will, I will put this thing. So I have a new grid. And you have several uh, choice. So if you want to, by example, uh, I, I, I'm, um, I, don't, I don't like to lose, so I want to win. So the easy way to win is to remove the, the, the bombs from the, the game. So I, will, I want to remove the, so it detects 24 uh, times 17. If I refresh the screen, oh, the bombs are not there, I win, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> so because I, I didn't, uh, okay, I will reset score. And yes, I, I win. But you can do also. You can trick the the, the program because uh, you can you can say, okay, I want to explode the bomb, and I want to win. So the bomb will be exploded. I see them. I they are exploded. If I click, it won't. Hap nothing will happen, and I can just play normally and win. <laughs> So that's cool because that shows that you can basically do everything with this debugger and the PowerShell executable. And uh, that's funny, but if you do that in another software, it won't, maybe it, will, it won't be so funny for several companies. But Microsoft likes this tool because they uh, call it a hack tool officially. They make a sig signature for this tool just, bef just after I I tell us, hey, guys, I, I saw that, uh, is that normal? They say, yes, it's not a security problem. So just, be, just after saying that, they just uh, make it an act tool with a, a sign, with a signature. And in, on every of my computer, even on my wife's computer, <laughs> there were a lot of alerts of my own tools. <laughs> Thank you. That's the end of the talk.